cost of attending weddings has gone up considerably. So another victim of inflation, I guess. But the numbers really blew me away. This is according to a survey or study, I should say, done by Bankrate. And according to this new report by the financial services company, the average US wedding guest will spend $611 per event. Jeez. That's a lot. No, the, yeah, that is a ton of money. But why? Well, I mean, there's a ton of things. One is that you could be have someone obnoxious like me do a destination wedding, and then you're totally screwed if you're going to go. That costs a lot more. Sorry. Yes. Yes. Yeah, but also, I would have liked to go to your wedding. Those were the early days of TYT. Ain't nobody got the salary for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true. That's, that's why we didn't have yeah. a lot of TYT people there. Unfortunately, I barely had the salary for it. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, I, we. Parents help. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, so look, I do know why it gets that expensive, right? So if there's travel involved, it's expensive. But also, you gotta worry about a wedding outfit. You gotta worry about a wedding gift. You gotta worry about, I don't know, other things that pop up. God forbid you're part of the wedding party. That's a disaster, right? Because yep. the way Armenians do it, and it, I'm sure that like more modern Armenians do it differently, but I had a very like traditional Armenian wedding. And for Armenians, like if you invite people to your birthday party, for instance, you pay for the party. Like no one, if you're if you have a birthday dinner, you don't expect your guests to pay for the dinner. You buy dinner for everybody, right? Like that's just what the tradition is. So yeah. with weddings, we had our wedding party and I bought the dresses and accessories and everything for all the bridesmaids. Because that's what you're expected to do in Armenian tradition, but not all traditions do that. No, no, <laughs> not I've, even close. I've been in like a, <laughs> almost a dozen wedding parties, and usually they don't pay for it, and then no. you got to go out of pocket. And back then, I was dirt poor, so like they'd be like, "Oh, I want you to be in my wedding party," and I'm like, "God damn!" I mean, "Oh, thank you, thank you, appreciate it. That's wonderful," because <laughs> <laughs> it's that's gonna it was gonna hurt me. It did right, like, but. So that's all of this is real and it's been around for a long time. It's just the numbers are getting higher. So 36% of the people surveyed plan to tone down how they spend to not go over budget, okay? Another 21% say they'll feel pressure to spend more than they would have liked to while 18% use credit card debt to finance their attendance. Please don't do that. Just don't do that. Why? Why would you do that? Like don't just it's okay, just be honest and open. If you can't afford it, your friends will understand. Maybe if it's a family member who's getting married, maybe there are other family members who will pitch in and make it easier for you to attend. Don't go into debt to attend weddings, that's crazy, right? Yeah, I think so. And there's maybe there's other ways that you could do things like so, for example, you might be able to attend, but get a more modest gift, right? So yeah. like don't feel pressured to to get like a huge gift if you can't afford it, especially if you got to go into debt to do it. Exactly, don't do that. Exactly. Exactly. Right. And then okay, so one other thing I just want to quickly say though. If if you're on the frugal side of things, I I'm in that camp by the way, right? Like I'm very responsible with personal finance and I'm very careful with how we spend our money, but as I've gotten older, I've realized that the things that are worth spending money on and splurging on, for me at least, are things like this. Because weddings, first of all, are super fun. But more importantly, it's an excuse to get everyone together in one place and celebrate something wonderful in this increasingly dystopian country that we live in. So if I wanna focus my money on Things that are well spent or, or well worth spending money on, family gatherings, weddings, celebrating people in our lives, like that I think is worth it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, you're really, I feel like you're not into this story. Like usually I can't stop you from interrupting me <laughs> or talking, but like you're just like, yeah, yeah, I, I don't know, I guess, sure, do whatever. Look, you want. here, I'll tell you uh, my <laughs> take on it. So look, for weddings, um, it like, I don't care about the pomp and circumstance at all, at all, right? But I agree with Anna that I love that everybody gets together, right? right? And dances. And dances and has fun and gets drunk and stuff like that. And my wedding was wild, okay? Like it was, 
we were going to do traditions from each of the different cultures, like jumping over a broom, breaking a plate, breaking a glass, getting carried on the chairs. Like a quarter of the way through, me and Wendy were too drunk. Okay, <laughs> like, and 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 Wendy to this day blames Michael Shore because he kept <laughs> he kept handing out shots. Okay, so. Uh, Anyway, it was so yes, weddings can be awesome and fun, but as long as you're not stressing so much yes. about the pomp and circumstance and how much to spend and all that stuff, and you're actually having the fun part. Like in one of my fantasies about getting rich mm -hmm. is that I have enough money that every once in a while I just rent out a place and I get hors d'oeuvres for everyone. Like, like endless hors d'oeuvres. You come do whatever you want. There'll be no frills. You're not allowed to bring any gifts. You're oh, not yeah. right, and there'll be no decorations. Okay, it'll be a boring, plain room. I'm not even sure there's going to be music, but hors d'oeuvres <laughs> for everyone. Okay, yeah. and so that's my dream of like an ideal get together for people. That sounds fun. It really does. The thing that, okay, no judgment if you do this, but the one thing that I personally get annoyed with is when you look at the registry for gifts. And there's no affordable option, right? Like everything is like two hundred fifty dollars or above. Like, oh, uh, we want, we really need this from William Sonoma or whatever it is. It's yeah. like, do you though? Do you really need that? You guys yeah. have been living together for the last five years. Do you really need that? I don't think you do. I'm gonna give you money. I'll just give you money. <laughs> like, I'll say two more things. Look, man. When I was poor, I thought to myself, I'll make up for it later. Okay, mm -hmm. and I would give not that much. You know why? Because I didn't have anything. I didn't have anything. So what do you like? And and but generally speaking, almost everybody, at least for as far as I know, understood, mm -hmm. right? And so and now I give more, and that's how you make up for it. And that's okay. That's normal. So don't feel stressed about it if you don't have that much, right? In terms of giving, and the Chinese have a good tradition. It's called a red envelope, right? Hell yeah. So when you're, you know, the Parents give it to the kids, and the kids, when they grow up, they give it to the parents. You give it when you go to a wedding, but it just keeps going back and forth. And it's it's kind of almost like a communal insurance. Mm. And like when people need it for a start in their lives, or as they're getting older, or they're really young, they get the red envelopes. It's kind of a genius communal way of helping without overstressing. I so love there's that. like different ways to combat it, so you don't have to spend $611. To just attend a wedding and bankrupt yourself. And by the way, if you're a boomer, you're likely to spend around that amount. But if you're part of Gen Z, you're probably paying a lot more to go to weddings. This this actually shocked me. So while baby boomers only expect to spend on average $667 this wedding season, millennials and Gen Z expect to spend I can't even believe this, $1,191 and $1,211. What? I, I You're spending more? I don't get it. I really don't. I don't understand. Oh, that is, that's a bit shocking. Those are huge numbers. Remember, 40% of the country can't afford like a $400 uh, difference that, uh, that they didn't expect yeah. in their budget. So I don't know who's doing these crazy weddings. Well, I mean, I don't know for sure, but. Consumer debt is at an all time high. People are charging things on their credit cards like crazy. So if you're on the younger end of the spectrum and you're spending a ton of money just to be a wedding guest and you're putting it on credit cards, please don't, please don't. You're digging yourself into a disastrous hole. Yeah, That's, that's the only financial advice I'll give people here. There is only one upside to any kind of wedding like trends. So my brother-in-law just got married for the second time. And I was like, oh my God, what happened? Did I miss the wedding? They're like, no, no, it's the second wedding. So they didn't make a big deal out of it. I was like, okay. And and then another friend of mine, uh, he's getting married for the third time. Oh, and come on. Come <laughs> and on. I'm like, and so should I come over? It's because it would be a, quite a trip for me. And he's like, no, no, you'll just catch the next one. Oh my God. <laughs> And by the way, he's now divorced. <laughs> <laughs> True story. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun, but you also get 
playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all of that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.